Today we're going to be talking about how to evaluate a double integral and in this particular problem we've been given the double integral of the region R and what we've been asked to do essentially is find the volume above the rectangle defined by this interval for x and this interval for y but below this function here xy squared over x squared plus 1. So if you just draw a Cartesian coordinate system like this, a Cartesian coordinate plane, and you talk about x being from 0 here to 1, so from 0 to, let's say, 1 is here, and then y being from negative 3 to positive 3, we'll call that negative 3 maybe to positive 3, something like that. What we've been asked to do is find the volume that's sitting on top of this rectangle right here, but below this function here. That's the general concept, but really evaluating the integral is fairly simple because we've already been given the interval for x and y. All we need to do is transform our double integral here to include our limits of integration for x and y, and to take out dA here and substitute in its place dy dx. So here's what our double integral is going to look like. We're going to have the same function that we have here, xy squared over x squared plus 1. In place of dA, we're going to go ahead and put dy dx. And this is important because when we have our double integral out here, we need to pay attention to which integral is going to reference which limits of integration. So because dy here is on the inside, that means that the inner integral has to relate to y in the same way that dy here relates to y. So dy is on the inside, the inner integral has to relate to y dx is on the outside, the outer integral here has to relate to x. So our limits of integration for y, we've been given negative 3 to positive 3. So that's going to go on the inner integral. The limits of integration for x are going to be 0 and 1, and that's going to go on the outer integral like this. Now all we need to do is evaluate. And as we said before, because dy is on the inside here, what that tells us is that we're going to be integrating first with respect to y, then with respect to x. You always work from the inside out. So integrating first with respect to y, what we can see here is that we only have y squared here. That's the only part of this function that involves y. What we can do to make this a little easier to see is we can separate that y squared from the rest of this function. So let's, instead of this fraction here, we'll, we'll say instead x over x squared plus 1 times y squared. So we just pulled that y squared out in front. Now when we integrate with respect to y, we're going to be treating y as the variable and x as the constant. Because we're treating x as a constant, this x over x squared plus 1, this whole thing here, is just a constant coefficient on the y term here, the, the second degree y term. So what we're going to do to integrate this with respect to x, and we'll go ahead and add 1 to the exponent for y, so instead of 2 here we'll get 3, but then we need to divide by our new exponent, and that means dividing by 3, so what we'll get here is 1 third times x over x squared plus 1. That x over x squared plus 1 just stays because it's a constant coefficient in the same way that this 1 third is now a constant coefficient. And we're going to be evaluating that on the interval negative 3 to positive 3, and we keep our dx here. So now we're going to evaluate this whole thing in the middle, and then once we've got all the y's eliminated here, then we'll evaluate with respect to x. Keep in mind that these limits of integration, negative 3 and positive 3, related to y. So it's really important to remember that these are going to be plugged in for y, not for x. So when we evaluate now on this interval, what we'll get, we'll plug in our upper limit of integration, 3. So we'll have 1 third times x over x squared plus 1 times 27, because we get 3 cubed here. So we'll multiply by 27. Then we're going to subtract whatever we get when we plug in negative 3. So we'll get minus 1 third times x over x squared plus 1. Negative 3 cubed is a negative 27. So we'll multiply by negative 27 and then have here the dx. What we can see here now is that the negative signs are going to cancel out. We have a minus negative 27, so those are going to become positive. And now essentially we have 27 thirds x over x squared plus 1 plus 27 thirds x over x squared plus 1, which is going to give us 54 thirds, 54 thirds times x over 
x squared plus one when we add those together. Now notice that all of our y variables here have been eliminated. We only have x's remaining. Let's go ahead and integrate with respect to x. We can pull that 54 thirds out in front of the integral as a constant coefficient here. And we'll just be left with x over x squared plus one dx. Now we can integrate this using u substitution. We'll set u equal to x squared plus one. Take the derivative of u to get du. The derivative of x squared plus one is just two x dx. And then we can solve for dx by dividing both sides by two x and we'll get dx is equal to du over two x. Now we can go ahead and make that substitution. What we'll end up with here is the integral from zero to one of x over u. And for dx, we're plugging in du over two x. Now you'll notice that we'll get our x's here to cancel. We've got x to the first in the numerator and denominator. We can pull the two out in front of the integral. What we're left here then is 54 over six times the integral from zero to one of one over u du. Now we know that 54 over six is just nine, and we know that the integral of one over u is natural log of u, so we'll say nine natural log of u, and we're gonna be evaluating that on the interval zero to one as soon as we back substitute for u. So remember that u is equal to x squared plus one, so we'll get nine natural log of x squared plus one, and we'll evaluate that on zero to one. Plugging one in first, we'll get nine times the natural log of one squared is one, plus one is two, so nine natural log of two, minus whatever we get when we plug in zero. So nine natural log of zero plus one will just be one. Natural log of one is zero, so that's gonna go away completely, and we're just left with nine natural log of two as our final answer. This is the volume that sits above this rectangle that we graphed here, and under the function xy squared, over x squared plus one. So I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, like this video down below and subscribe to be notified of future videos.